Hey, it's Mac with PriceActionTradingSystem.com, and it is Wednesday. It's January 6th. This will be our chart lesson, and uh, not a lot of trades today, but there's some really good trades. There's a couple of them in here that were uh, really took off and were great moves. So if you just caught one or two, if you caught one or two of these, you might you might have had a, a week's worth of profits in one trade. It just depends on how it all works out. But anyway. Uh, what looked like was going to be a strong range or just a regular range day with a tight range. We broke out of that and just traded straight up. Um, a lot of momentum in this move. And we got a break and a new high, but it took a little while for that momentum to fade. But you see it still plays out. Always look to see if you get a flatter. You know, you could also maybe look at this sideways, but you can see they're making higher lows there. And if you draw that, and when I back out a little bit, you'll see the midlines playing perfectly. Uh, it's equal moves. So there's no doubt there's a trend channel there, but prices never come back and uh, retest that high on a break. And that's not uncommon because this was a really strong move. And this was after some news, FOMC news, or some negative news going on in Washington with the uh, uh, protesting and uh, who knows what's going to happen. So just be real careful trading right now. It's very volatile. Uh, they may jack the margin up again. They jacked it up last night, and uh, but they released it this morning. So I don't know if they'll uh, increase margin again or not. A lot of people complain about that. But honestly, increasing margin is uh, when there's crazy things going on is a good thing because it protects the broker. It protects what you protects your money that's with your broker as well. It's one thing that you should understand about futures trading is that most of the brokers are not FDI insured, FDIC insured. So um, don't ever keep any more money in there than you need to trade with and, and take your profits out quickly uh, each month or, or however often you want to do it. But don't leave a lot of your trading capital in with your broker that's not needed because if they went under or something happened, you can't get that money back. It's not insured. So just keep that in mind. I, people sometimes, I think, overlook that fact. And, uh, and it's, I, it doesn't matter. Most all the brokers are the same. Those accounts are just not uh, insured for the most part. Now, if you go to some of the bigger ones like E-Trade or, or TDA America, uh, Generally, those are FDI insured, but you pay a lot of money to trade with. You, you really can't trade features with them uh, because of the cost involved and so forth. So not at least not small retail guys. If you got deep pockets, you probably can trade with them. But the average retail guy is not going to want to trade with those kind of brokers. So you're, you're going to want a true futures broker, and generally they're not insured. So uh, anyway, I just thought I'd throw that out since we were talking about it. This was an FOMC announcement day, and so... That's what this little purple area is. Usually from about noon till they make that announcement, don't trade. You can see, uh, I don't really think this big move had much to do with the FOMC minutes coming out. It could have, uh, but it looks like it's almost, let's just look here. That was, there's your one o'clock period when it comes out. And this didn't really sell off till 17 minutes later. So maybe it took that long for people to digest what was in the minutes that they didn't like for it to start selling off. But I just think it was a combination of all that's going on today. We really don't care why it sells off, but there shouldn't have been any surprise because we turned down off the high of the range. It came back, made a lower high, and then made a couple more lower highs before it took off. And I'll, I'll explain this trade when we get to it. But that's what I see today. Uh, there's no way to get a measured move or anything like that. So... You know, generally when we start trading up here at these highs, go back and look for your last high and notice where we turn down. Basically the same place. So that, that's 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 the only time I really look back to previous day's price action is when there's nothing to compare to and your support and resistance. And that's where everything happens. That's where all the magic is, is your support and resistance and what I call the key entry points. And that's all trend lines are, are slanted key entry points. And then your ranges are your horizontal key entry points or support and resistance. And, and people lose sight of the fact that that right there is just a slanted support and resistance that holds prices. And if once you learn how to draw these and how to draw them properly, your trend lines and your ranges and your, uh, actually not your trend lines, but your trend channels, 
it's it's so helpful and you'll see like clockwork uh, prices generally will turn down off the highs and then when they hit the low side they'll turn back up and just like they do in a range for the most part and if they don't make it or they turn early or they turn late it, it tells you other information so keep that in mind but let's back out we'll go through the trades and we'll try to keep this I'm getting a little bit or I'm still late compared to what I'd like to do I'd like to do these at three or four and have them up by four o'clock every day but it's just impossible right now for me I'm just so swamped from being gone and and everything that's going on after being back but i'll try to hopefully over the next week or two i can start to get a little earlier but I, this is definitely earlier than the last couple of days so i feel like i've made a little bit of accomplishment today but anyway let's talk about these trades let me back out a little more where this is oops sorry i never failed to do that let's back out here where it's visible but you can see clearly we're in a range here and we just were going into tighter ranges and we were kind of working back down off the highs and we're just kind of mulling around in the middle but we went into this really actually let me back up i'm getting too far ahead of myself seven o'clock came right as we bottomed out here and we're just working back and forth and then we have this little failed breakout right here um technically this is this is an inside bar so you wouldn't want to take a short off of that. I mean, you could call that a second entry short. You can clearly see the two legs back. So that gives it some bearing, but I wouldn't trade this based on that. However, if you look at this high right here, you get a first entry. It actually breaks higher again right there. Um, but I, I look at that all as one move. Um, and so there's clearly two legs back. So I, I looked at this as a failed second entry long. And it, it's also a failure out of this little trading range so if you get a chance to go short up here you want to take it and so for that reason technically this is your signal bar so your safety stop has to go above it but then you had this inside bar with still plenty of room and it doesn't really matter it just keeps going so uh, i like going short one tick below that bar uh, that's when your failure occurred really and it drops down it actually bounces and that's where you'd look to exit on this trade i'd probably i probably wouldn't try to keep a runner i'm just going to exit where the support is because you're probably going to bounce just like you did um you don't want to go short here even though it breaks higher and turns back down because you can't go short into that support and you don't want to go short way down here so no trade here and then we just start going sideways again same thing um again we have a failed breakout but that signal bar is not good enough and there's no second failed second entry or reversal type pattern or anything but and lo and behold you get a lower high with still plenty of room another great trade then you come down here and it actually fails out the other side this actually breaks lower and turns and goes out it's an engulfing bar look at all that room back to the highs which is that's probably the minimum of where we're going or at least the ema and so as long as you got room take that trade because this is just sideways stuff and this is what happens prices break out and they reverse uh the better trade obviously is the higher low but that bar is too neutral and it's a shame because you miss this nice move up and you get a two-legged pullback right here that bounces off the ema but again no signal bar for me if you had a good signal bar there go long but uh, I, yeah my chart no way i'm going long there and you don't want to go long obviously the key is do you have enough room before you get back to the highs of the range and we just blow right through that it looks like we're going to get a failure don't trade this there's no trade in there on either side because there's just not enough room to get out so don't try to trade that you know people i saw a couple of people on the forum lost on some of these trades right here don't trade that this is a strong move up and obviously you would want to look at your measured move here too uh, just to get an idea of where this might turn down here's your first leg and you can see we basically had a perfect measured move and that may be what led some of you to try to go short there but that's just too congestive uh, that's really tempting right there uh, i kind of understand why somebody might have gone short there because you have these these lows here which you could you could call that a double bottom so first entry second entry of course if you went short on that one you can't because it's an inside bar so there's your second entry short so this is just a little one more push higher and the first uh that would be a 
first, second, a third entry short. And you don't want to take that kind of trade, especially not right into that midline. Of course, you probably wouldn't have that midline, although you could draw this off the top and draw it down and you would have seen it was fitting properly. But, but most of the average new traders are not going to get that. If you got that, that should tell you not to go short. But most of you probably aren't going to see that. And then by the time this bar forms, there's no doubt we're in congestion. So there's no long or short anywhere across there until you finally break out. And you try to go, notice you got a new low. And you try to go lower once and then twice. And this actually uh, confirms the trend line right here. And so look how bullish that bar is. Uh, and we've been seeing this lately. And so I like going long there. You're just looking for a scalp. But you probably get a whole lot more out of this one. You should get a runner out of that one. And then we run up and we start going sideways again back to the trend channel line. And, you, and look at this real small signal bar. Mostly very bullish. It didn't quite close on its high, but that's still a bullish bar. Seven ticks, very low risk. Look at all that support. Plus you have the trend trend line right there as well that's well proven now if it bounces there you should at least get a scalp and you got a quick scalp you might have exited after that um, you probably won't want to ride, hold a runner through that I'll, although I wouldn't be afraid to tighten my stop right in here and try to hold a runner and then we actually run up and try to go lower one more time and get another bullish bar we didn't quite get back to the trend line so, uh, but you would expect prices to probably try to go higher here. I mean, you can see these corrections are, they're very, very shallow corrections. This is another one of those strong trends. I, I've talked about them all week. We've had several of them. So off it goes and you get another good entry. There's actually a failed second entry short right there that does confirm that trend line. I didn't mark that one, but you could probably argue for that to be green with the, uh, with the momentum on this move, you could argue for that to be green on a failed second entry short. And we come back to the trend line. Unfortunately, that's not a very good signal bar. Uh, and this one doesn't break higher. It just is an inside bar. So I don't think you want to enter there. Uh, again, this one's kind of iffy too, but you may not get anything better than that on a day when you get strong momentum. But as you can see, eventually it plays out. Of course, there's no setup here. So you, it's an, either one of those, you could argue for them to be green. I'm not going to mark them. I think we, they're a little bit too risky. Uh, and, and again, we're not looking for any shorts yet. There's just no reason to go short, even with this break right here. Something that strong, the odds are we're going to get a flatter channel or something. So just, just sit tight. Don't try to go short here. And notice you get a first entry and then you get a second entry. That's a little bit too congestive though. But then you get a failed second entry short here and it, it pretty much confirms that trend line up through there. Um, and a nice bullish bar like going along there. And you don't want to go long way up here. And then you come back and you just kind of get congested there. Um, it's hard to know if you really had a little bit of an overshoot here. It's not enough that I would call that an overshoot anyway. Maybe just I could have my trend channel off just a tad and there would be no break high or anything there. That's too congestive sideways. Uh, you definitely don't want to go short, but I'd be careful going long because this is what happens. You breaks higher and you get trapped. Even though it is right off the key entry point. Just when that many bars are going sideways after we've already had a break of the main one, and a big move up, I'd just sit tight and see what happens. And of course, it does drop down here. But again, you don't want to go short yet. Uh, I would have drawn this trend line here. I actually did draw it and had it a little higher. Well, I'm not going to try to move it. I actually had it a little higher and I think I adjusted it. Maybe I've just let it move down. It probably should be more like that. Um, but we start rallying here. And I mark this trade as green, and I'll t explain to you why. It's not a second entry or anything. Uh, notice you got one leg up, pull back, and a second leg up. There's two legs up there. And I, I want to say this is one of the ones where somebody uh, had, a lot, had a loser right in here. And they saw this as 
a first entry, second entry, short. That I can't remember how they traded this. Uh, I think they tried to go short right here and they got burned. But you don't be looking for a short in there yet. Um, there's just there's just no reason to enter in all that. If you did enter right there, um, I don't know if that trade would have worked or not. I believe that's where. 59 and a quarter, and it only went to 58. Yeah, it didn't even get close. So if you went short right there and it starts going sideways before it breaks higher and stops you out, take what you can get. But it's just too early to go short yet, still. Hopefully you would have seen this trend line and know that we just came off of it and that confirmed it. So you're just what you're what's happening here is you're just getting resistance from the uh, EMA there and look, knows how it works over to the, to the shorter term trend line and then it goes higher again and then this confirms it and that's why I like the long because there's two legs up right there and notice you got a new low and you try to go short once and then twice so that's a failed second entry short with a little bit of a trap there and you get a little double test of this breakout area of this tighter there's actually a little tighter range right here and it goes higher and Unfortunately, it comes back, and so you don't get a runner here. But now, you you get another test, a big bullish bar right off this strong support here. And that's probably why prices came back, because they didn't quite get back here. People, most likely this trend line's holding it back. But once we came off the top here, now it looks like a range. And guess where it bounces? I, I like going long right there. And if you do, you catch another runner. And you can ride this up. I would exit before one o'clock. Um, my rule on this, on these high volatility news items, is to be flat about an hour prior. If you're managing a trade, just manage it right on up. You know, 10 or 15 minutes before exit. But don't take any new trades about an hour prior, especially on FOMC days. Any kind of FOMC announcement. A lot of times you'll see speaker announcements and things like that, and they'll be high volatility red, but don't worry about those things. There's no way to know when he starts speaking, if he's going to say anything that might spook the market. Uh, just be aware of when those guys are speaking with your news item, but don't worry about them. Uh, I've never, uh, it's just, I'm not going to have the rule that I won't trade. I'm just, when I know they're speaking, I'm just kind of paying attention in case something crazy happens, but uh, it's very rare. But anyway, this turns out to be a really nice trade. We come back here and get another failure, but that just looks a little too congestive. And at that time, too, I wasn't sure if this trend channel was not right in here. And so you don't want to go long right into that. There's just not a lot of room there. Turn, come to find out, that's just the midline, really. And so you can see that clearly now. So I'm just not crazy about that one. And then that takes us into this period. And then we come out in this little range here. And this actually breaks higher and turns down. And that's a notice that we made the high there. You test it once. You test it twice. You really tested it a bunch of times. And it's obvious there's strong resistance right there. So when this breaks higher and turns down, when it goes out this other side right here, I like selling that right there. And this is why, because look at this move. And you knew, and if, and generally the price action is going to be right. And if this channel's correct, which it looks, which there's a lot of evidence that it is, we're going lower here. We might push up all the way to the line one more time. But with all that resistance across there, we're going to probably go at least down to the lows in the EMA. So if you got room, take that trade. Now, don't enter way down here. It's too late here. Sure, it works, but you don't know that. And that's not, that is breaking the rules. But when this breaks higher, you can go short one tick below this bar when it comes back through on that engulfing bar. As far as entering down here, no. Even though it takes off like a rocket, unfortunately, but you just can't enter there because most of the time it won't do that. Look how many times it bounced across there. You can't risk it, that. So it runs down. We get a break here. We actually make a lower high. We make another leg down. And then we just start going sideways. You don't want to be buying yet. Um, 
there's your first leg and there's your second leg notice we almost got a perfect move before it bounced uh, but still you don't want to be buying here because this is a strong downtrend and you can see this shorter term I don't know why that's short like that but I just drew that off those highs and you can see that working down there as well and but you just don't want to be buying here uh, it's too sideways that's tempting right there there's enough room to get back but I would with it being the bias being downward now I just sit and wait and even though it would have worked just wait and you definitely don't want to go long here we come up and you might actually take that trade right there I didn't mark it the problem is uh, there's you got you should have a good idea that there might be a trend line because you can draw it off those first couple of swings but you just don't know for sure and that's some pretty strong momentum you're probably better off to wait on the lower high you could mark that green and if you really wanted to take that trade you could because you could look at it as a failed breakout here too and we're way away from the EMA and a lot of stuff going on there uh, but the lower high is the better trade which you get right here but notice the signal bar is no good and uh, it's unfortunate it actually breaks higher here and turns down but now it just looks too congestive and if it is congestion, you're probably going to get a little breakout pullback, which you get right here. And notice it breaks higher first and turns down and goes out. I like that trade. Because now you not only have a failed second entry long that looks like it's going to fail, so it's probably going to act as a trap right here. A lot of people might be looking for that second leg up there as well. Uh, but they're forgetting that we haven't come back and tested this at a minimum, much less and plus this trend line is well confirmed by this place and when there's been no break of it yet so we're probably going lower so i like this actually this is another one that breaks higher and turns down just go short one tick below that i don't think i would go short way down here because now you've got a test of this you can see how you find a little support because that it's a test of that it doesn't hold but you don't know that and it comes back here again it's right off that trend line but it's just a first entry if you took it it works but I just think that's too risky. Uh, there is a lower high right here and a very nice signal bar. But look how we're going sideways right there. Um, if you took that one, next thing you know, you've got these dojis going sideways. Just get out of that trade. Um, it bounces. It stops everybody out. And then it goes right where everybody that got fooled here was thinking so but here we go we make the high now you get a lower high here you still plenty of room back to the EMA very bearish bar first break of the channel that's where you want to go short and you can see that one just moves down quickly that's another great trade where you get a runner comes down here makes a, a new low and it tries to bounce but it keeps on going that's your first close really outside that channel keeps on going that one's kind of iffy if it's really closed outside so you make another close and a new low and then it bounces and you don't want to be going long here yet but notice you get two legs up and a failed second entry uh, short right here it's not a great setup because it's so congestive looking and then uh, this is really where you would go long one tick above that bar because that's where it failed but your stop still has to go below this one so that makes that pretty risky right especially right at two o'clock with prices going sideways it is still bouncing off that trend line so if you took that one you know it's a, it's uh, it's just aggressive but i can see why some people might want to play that failed second entry uh short there because this is played out and we could be going higher there's another thing to look at here that i didn't put on here because really it, it wasn't going to help you till after two o'clock but you can see that and that would have been another reason to probably keep you out of going long there because you can clearly see that we just flattened out here let me color this one so maybe it makes it a little easier to see just use lime And so now you can clearly see there is another channel here. 
and it might actually be a little bit higher than that. And you can clearly see the midlines proving it out as well. And you get a break and you move down here and you just barely make a new low. I'm pretty sure that's a new low. Yep, you can see you make a new low there. And then we just kind of chop sideways into the close. So uh, again, it's not a lot of trades today, but there's, I mean, when I say that, I'm just really thinking about usually a day that's this volatile. There's so many trades, you can't even hardly get through them all. It still took me 25 minutes, but there was a lot of uh, good learning opportunities on this chart here. So I hope it was helpful to you. And I'm going to wrap it up and uh, we'll come back tomorrow and wrap up our week. I can't believe we already got the first week in the book almost. So one more trading day uh, as far as chart lessons go. I, I'll probably trade Friday, but I'll leave early. So anyway, I uh, hope you had a good trading day. Hope you learned something today. We'll be back again to do it tomorrow and wrap up our week. I'm done for today. This is Matt with PriceActionTradingSystem.com. And we'll see you next time.